Nalanda was a monastic institution dating back to the 6th and 5th century BC. According to the Pali texts, Nalanda emerged as the greatest academic and spiritual center of Asia. Through the ages, its grandeur enhanced and in the medieval times, it reached the peak. Beginning with Kumar Gupta I, the tradition was carried forward by Harsha, which continued till the Pala kings. Nalanda gained recognition as greatest organized center for learning up till the medieval ages. Though it saw decline and destruction with the advent and plunder of the Turks, the history of its eminence still exists in the records of the Chinese. To restore its lost glory and place of prominence, effort has been made in the modern times. It is hoped that however small the effort may seem, comparatively with the bygone eras, it is worth a recognition. The modern Navnalanda Mahavihar works within an architectural and cultural aura that harks back in time to another age. The simple majesties of vigor and passion, Pali language and literature, Buddhist philosophy, culture and social and religious history take on a new significance and grandeur. An individual feels for a cause, goes on to create a movement that gives a new face to history and its ever-flowing stream. This is the story of Bhikkhu Jagdish Kashyap. The year was 1908, an era of independent of soul and thought from British imperialism. Here in Ranchi, Bihar, another big stream through whom India was reborn took birth. The young Jagdish Narayan later came to be known in life as Bhikkhu Jagdish Kashyap. Jagdish Narayan was the third son of his father, Sri Sham Narayan of Raunia village of Gaya district, a well-to-do Zamidar Kayast family. The family was well respected and loved by the villagers. We are standing in the village Raunia, which is one of the village of Kirisra block and this is the house of Mr. Jagdish Narayan Kashyap, my Grandfather Jagdish Narayan spent his childhood days in Ranchi at his Nana's house. The house was an important hub of Congress activities. The political influence of the day was strong on young Jagdish Narayan. Frequent visitors to his Nana's house, Dr. Rajendra Prasad and Dr. Krishna Vallab Sahai, were his idols. Later on, the house became the main house of Rashtriya Bharatiya Congress Ranchi. Jagdish Narayan had his primary education in Rachi only. He was very brilliant and studied Sanskrit, English and Maths etc. at home. He did his matriculation from Rachi. Later, he shifted to Patna and graduated from there. Nationalistic streak came to the forefront. He led protest against the Simon Commission. For further education, he joined Banaras Hindu University of Mahamana, Madan Mohan Malbiya. He did his MA in Philosophy and Sanskrit from BHU. He had been actively engaged in politics and took huge part in the Satyagraha of 1931 along with Rashtriya Bharatiya Congress. But history had other motives and directions. The intense religiosity of his mother, Bataso Devi, was what won Jagdish over. He imbibed a similar strong religious bent. And though nationalism had a strong say, it was religious ideas that led him forward in life. On the instance of Sri Ayodhya Prasad, he had joined Sanskrit Vidya Peet Gurukul in Gaya. He worked as an Arya. And then life turned on its head. Through a book, the destiny took over the regions and Buddhism became the goal of his life. He left the Gurukul and met Dr. Bhagwan Das who referred him to the Tripitaka and Pali. 
to a future of deep understanding of Buddhist philosophies. Another powerful influence was of his Guru Bhai, Mahapandit Rahul Sankritian. The first instance of this was when Dr. Sankritian presented him books on Buddhism brought back from Tibet. They had been taken away when Nalanda was at its height. Dr. Sankritian had made it as his goal to return these precious books to Nalanda University. He along with uh, Rahul Sankritian ji and Bhadanta Ananda Kaushalyayan were able to revive the studies of Buddhism and especially Pali in India. Jagdish Narayan made up his mind that this was to be his mission too, to revive the glory of Nalanda. He realized that being true to his cause would mean turning into a bhikshu, promising service for life. Among the biggest victories of Jagdish Narayan's life was formal permission from his mother to turn into a bhikshu, similar to Buddha, who had left home to turn into one. He went to Sri Lanka. He took Prabhajya from Mahasthavir Dhamanand. At Sri Lanka, Jagdish Narayan carried out intensive research on the Pali language. He wrote all his major works in Sinhala. He cleared the most difficult of exams and gained the status of a Tripitaka Acharya. It was here also that he came to be known as Bhikshu Jagdish Kashyap, bringing him great renown in Sri Lanka was a book he wrote at the time in Sanskrit on Buddhism and its principles. He returned to India in 1934. Kashyapji and Rahulji travelled to Japan on a Buddhism mission. An important assignment here was translation of the Dig Nikai into Hindi. En route, Kashyapji was detained at Penang by the British force because of his earlier association with Mahatma Gandhi. While at Penang, Kashyapji's two gob mere to complete the translation of Dignikai and learning Chinese language. He fulfilled both. Dignikai was published in 1936. Here, Kashyapji made his knowledge of Chinese language and Anapan Sat Asan a medium for taking his message to the masses. He became popular in Penang, Singapore, Malaysia, etc. From Penang, Kashyapji went back to Sri Lanka to meditate on the Anapan Sati of Buddhism to gain mastery over it. Jagdishji then returned to Allahabad to the mission that his friend Rahul Sankritian held out for him, propagating Buddhism as greats had done before him. Aspects of Buddhism was a religion, a way of life for And he was a cutter. Sarnath, his first Karm Bhumi on this mission. Symbolically, also the place where Buddha gave his first sermon. He started here as a schoolmaster in a high school and went on to bring new bloom to educational institutions there. Through his teaching, the funds he brought in from Burma and the beginning of a long-lasting association with industrialist Y.K. Birla. His introducing Pali at the Benares Hindu University remains a huge landmark in Buddhism studies. He was appointed head of Pali studies at BHU. This house on the BHU campus called Buddh Kutir was built specially for Kashyapji in the 1930s. Buddh Kutir turned into a major hub for the 1942 Quit India movement as the center of protection, essential strategy and information. <laughs> और इसी बड़ा सौभाग्य था कि मैं उस स्थान में 
पाली विद्या को मैंने पाया जो बौद्ध विद्या का महान केंद्र रहा अंतर्राष्ट्रीय महान केंद्र रहा जिनकी आज भी चर्चा हो रही और उस नालंदा विश्वविद्यालय को फिर से पुनर्स्थापना करने के लिए भारतीय नहीं कई देश लगे हुए हैं इस समय भी छोटे रूप में नालंदा नव नालंदा महाविहार चल रहा है जिसमें ही मैंने पहले पहले बौद्ध धर्म के पाठ भिक्षु जगदीश के चरणों में बैठकर सीखे और वो आज नहीं रहे उसका अभाव सबसे ज़्यादा महसूस हो रहा है कैसे वो पाली के ग्रंथों को रोमन से देवनागरी में सुंदर ढंग से संपादित कर गए और संपादन में वो माहिर थे और हम लोगों को बताते थे कि कोई भी भूल नहीं होनी चाहिए उसको उसको फिर से देखो प्रूफ की कोई मिस्टेक नहीं होनी चाहिए उसकी इंडेक्स बननी चाहिए तो ये काम हम लोग उस उनसे सीखे Independence in 1947 counted Kashyapji too as one of its heroes and with it came a determination to bring the power of Buddhism that had faded in India over the centuries into a new bloom In the 2nd century Emperor Ashoka's son and daughter Sangamitra had taken the light of Buddhism to Sri Lanka as bhikshus The son of Magadh bhikshu Jagdish Kashyap now had the mission to bring that great light back to india the seed for this was president dr rajendra prasad's announcement that nalanda would be revived as a central university thus nav nalanda mahavihar came into being the ancient university of nalanda existed at this time only as a deserted ruin people were afraid to venture near the erstwhile campus Kashyap ji set about repairing that. He stayed in this house at Rajgir when he came here for survey. Bringing a new Nalanda to life became his mission and goal. The Nalanda land belonged to Salauddin Chaudhary, a zamindar of nearby estate Islampur. On Kashyap ji's insistence, he granted 11 acres of land for building up Nam Nalanda Vihar. Kashyap ji left BHU for Magadh. He traveled on foot through the villages of Patna and Gaya, spreading the light of Buddhist teachings and knowledge. Magahi, the descendant of the Pali language, had strong roots here, and people identified strongly with Kashyap ji among the finest Pali scholars. Kashyap ji's ultimate mission was to spread Buddhism through education of Pali language alike Gautam Buddha Kashyap ji also became instrumental in spreading gyan in the land of Magadh He could start Pali as a subject in IA and BA classes in Nalanda College in Bihar Sharif He himself was teaching Pali as a professor All this while the love for his ancestral village Raunia remained in his heart. He also started a school at Raunia village. Kashyap ji sometimes used to come and take classes here. This people tree is a silent witness of that great educationist. Hum is vidyalay mein padhe hain aur yah unke dwara Kashyap ji ke dwara diya banwaya gaya ho tha. Humne unko khub acche tarah se dekhe hain. वे खूब लंबे चौड़े और पहलवान की तरह थे उनका वस्त्र गोरिया था और वे आते थे तो बच्चों को प्यार भी करते थे और उनके पीछे गांव के बहुत सारे लोग दौड़ पड़ते थे कश्यप जी ड्रीम टू ब्रिंग बैक द ग्लोरी ऑफ नालंदा स्टार्टेड जर्मिनेटिंग ही मेट उपेंद्र महारथी एन आर्किटेक्ट टू गिव अ शेप टू दिस टेम्पल ऑफ लर्निंग Upendra Maharathi was also had a love for Buddha and Buddhist architecture. Nav Nalanda Mahavihar was beginning to take shape. The entire concept of Nav Nalanda Mahavihar was being as envisioned uh, by Bhikshu Jagdish Kashyap ji 
in the early 50s. Then together with his architect, Buddhist friend, artist and architect, Buddhist friend Upendra Maharathi ji, they had tried to recapture the sanctity of the old Viharas uh, and uh, Buddhist grandeur of architecture for which this Bihar was known for because Bihar state has derived its name from Vihara. So the monastic corridors, the Chaitya Viharas, uh, the, the courtyards, the Ashokan railings and the stupa, dome-shaped stupa which is uh, uh, reminiscent of the old Chaitya architecture. All those Buddhistic architectural features but, uh, were imbibed by my father in the architectural plan of uh, Navnalanda Mahavihar. So the entire concept was to recapture the glory of the monastic tradition because it used to be the seat of holy seat of learning. On 20th November 1951, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, then President of India, laid foundation of Navnalanda Mahavihar. The Pali inscription speaks the original links to Ashoka and origin of Buddhism in the region. Kashyapji started Magad Pali Pratishthan in Rajgir. He started taking classes of MA Pali in this building. He was also staying in one room of the same building. In 1952, Pratishthan was shifted to Nalanda where Bhikuji had built a small temple with some cubicles attached to it. Besides the huge support from President Dr. Rajendra Prasad and Prime Minister Nehru, Bihar Chief Minister Dr. Shri Krishna Singh and Education Minister Dr. Jagdish Chandra Mathur played a significant role. The Navnalanda Mahavihar was formally inaugurated by Dr. Radha Krishnan. Vice President of India on 20th March 1956. Venerable Bhikshu Jagdish Kashyap, who was not only the founder director of Navanalanda Mahavihar, but was a great visionary and worked hard for the development of Pali and Buddhist studies in India and abroad. Over time, through Kashyapji's personal efforts and funds and gifts from around the globe, the library at the Navnalanda Mahavihar became a huge treasure house of books. Kashyapji brought in literary collections of Buddhist languages and texts from all the Buddhist countries of Asia. These documents had banished from Indian soil centuries ago. After setting up the working structure at Navnalanda Mahavihar, Kashyapji began to focus on the near-extinct Pali text. Earlier, the Pali literature was available in Singhali, Myanmar, Thai and Cambodian texts. Bhikshuk Jagdish Kashyap was the first time in the Pali language जो कार्य किया वह अत्यंत व्यापक और अत्यंत महत्वपूर्ण है। भिक्षु जगदीश कश्यप ने ही इस नवनालंदा महाविहार को बनाया और उनकी उनकी जो योजना थी उस योजना के अनुसार इसको विश्वविद्यालय का रूप देने का उन्होंने अतक प्रयास किया था। लेकिन वो चाहते थे कि जो प्राचीन नालंदा था नालंदा विश्व यहाँ पर बौद्ध शास्त्रों के सभी संप्रदायों के शास्त्रों का अध्ययन हो न केवल पाली का लेकिन उन्होंने शुरू में पाली को ही प्राथमिकता दी उन्होंने जो सबसे महत्वपूर्ण कार्य किया वो पाली भाषा जो एकदम लुप्त हो चुकी थी बिल्कुल भारत से समाप्त हो चुकी थी उस भाषा को अपनर उद्धार के लिए अनेक प्रयत्न किए काश्यप जी ने राधा के तन से मालवीय जी ने चर्चा की कि पाली के पढ़ाई हो रहा तो पहले तो जो तो राजा के कहा कि भाई आपका क्या भरोसा विक्षु आज आप है कल आप चले जाएंगे तो हम तो आपको रोक नहीं पाएंगे आप लोग तो चिड़िया की तरह है इस तरह की कुछ बात हुई तो कहा कि अगर हम बोल दिए हैं तो हम रहेंगे और हम सब आठों पेपर हम पढ़ाएंगे 
और एक पैसा हम नहीं लेंगे तो इस तरह की बातचीत होती थी अंत भूवा कहते ठीक है ट्राई करो बुद्ध जयंती का तो बुद्ध जयंती के समय इन्होंने नेहरू जी से के बातचीत में यह हुआ कि पाली त्रिपटक हम लोग अभी भी बर्बी भाषा में पढ़ते हैं थाई में पढ़ते हैं मगर नागरी अक्षरों में नहीं है यह एक ओकेजन है अगर आप मदद करें तो हम तैयार हैं और इनके मुँह से निकल के पाँच साल में हम दे देंगे बोल तो दिया मैं पाँच साल में दे रहा आसान मगर नेहरू जी मान गए तो मान गए तो इन्होंने भी कमर कर दिया छोड़ दिया रहा अंदर The Pali Text Society in London had already transcribed entire text into the Roman script. Bhikkhu ji worked tirelessly to translate it into Devanagari, over 41 volumes. On the 25th 100th anniversary of the birth of Buddha, this great translated work was presented to Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru in a grand ceremony. The return of the old treasure is said to have moved nehru emotionally because of him that for the first time the pali tipitak in devanagari script was published by navanalanda mahavihara and it is based on his planning that now the navanalanda mahavihara became deemed university and is working on the same line in 1955 Kashyap ji visited China as a missionary. He met the Chinese premier Chao En Lai and asked him for the ashes of Huan Sang, the former Chinese pilgrim who had made Nalanda his home for 12 years and had also taught there. Chao En Lai agreed immediately and also promised a Huan Sang memorial hall at Nalanda. In 1957, his representative the Dalai Lama from Tibet came to india and brought with him the ashes of huen sang the foundation stone for the huen sang memorial hall was also laid in a grand ceremony and the dalai lama gave pandit jawaharlal nehru a check of over 5 lakh rupees as a gift from the chinese government the indian government contributed an equal amount and it was used to construct the huen sang memorial hall this building is a symbol of china india cultural unity the majestic building is an attraction for scholars from around the world to this day this hall symbolizes the dream for the revival of nalanda ka sab ji chahte the ki en sang memorial hall mein mahayan ki padhai ho aur wahan se videsho mein jo chhatra bheje jaye ve नालंदा के धर्मदूत हों और इसी के आधार पर संपूर्ण विदेश से विदेश के सभी देशों से वे भारत से और विदेशों से संपर्क स्थापित करना चाहते थे इसीलिए चाइना तिब्बत जो महायान देश के निवासी थे उनसे उन्होंने संपर्क किया इन यर्स टू कम टू नालंदा was always the focus of bhikkhu ji's activities but it also extended to institutions in sarnath and bodh gaya kashyap ji persuaded the dalai lama to set up an institution in sarnath to teach sanskrit and tibetan languages his grand house in sarnath was given over to tibetans for this purpose the construction of an architectural monument to a cause is as beautiful as the grooming of an individual kashyap ji had said buildings made at his own expense to those constructed for buddhism at his inspiration there's a huge legacy to delight in he constructed a beautiful building for bhikshus students upasikas behind this structure The Thais have constructed a beautiful guest house and temple for the Thai people. In the temple precincts, the Thai people have installed a statue of Kashyap ji in his usual white clothes. A similar statue of Kashyap ji had been put up inside the Mahavihar building. Both these statues are a reflection of the love and respect of the Thai people for Kashyap ji. 
Kashyap ji had been responsible in the overall development of Navnalanda Mahavihar. Not only Buddhism but other subjects were also incorporated in promoting secular studies in Nalanda. Bhikkhu ji was a man of principle and always being helpful to people. He was popular with colleagues, Mahavihar staff and students as well. Chhatron ke scholarship ke liye, uske rehne ke liye, khane, pine, ityadi ka bhi pramandh be kya karte the aur jo garib chhatr rehte the be kaise aage badhe, aage padhe. Iski unke purne chinta rehti thi aur jo bhi unse ban padta tha us chhatr ki bhalai ke liye kya karte the. Ham logon ko unhone bahut hi pyar se padhaya. Naunalanda Mahavihar me meri niyukti hui me Banaras me tha us samay. तो जब यहाँ आना था मुझे अपने परिवार को लेके पत्नी और बच्ची तो उनके अंदर इतनी हमदर्दी किसी को कोई मतलब तो नहीं उन्होंने देखा कि मैं बिल्कुल यूपी का रहने वाला और बिहार में पहली बार आ रहा हूँ तो परेशानी होगी तो उन्होंने कहा कि आप बनारस से पटना आइए और हमें बता दीजिए कि किस ट्रेन से आ रहे हैं तो मैं गाड़ी लेके हम ड्राइवर को भेज देंगे और आपको सामान वामान सब उतार लेंगे कोई दिक्कत नहीं होगी तो इस बात में जैसे ही हम पहुंचे उनकी गाड़ी जो इंस्टीट्यूट की थी वो लगी थी बहुत प्रेम से वो एक भिक्षु थे उनको परिवार से मतलब नहीं होना चाहिए लेकिन एक मानवता के नाते एक नए आदमी के नाते कि कोई हमको परेशानी या घबराहट इस नई जगह में ना हो उन्होंने गाड़ी में हम लोगों का प्रबंध किया और नालंदा तक साथ में लाए उन्होंने मुझे व्यक्तिगत रूप से भी सहायता की थी मैं उन्हीं की सहायता से काशी हिंदू विश्वविद्यालय में अंग्रेजी की एम परीक्षा में बैठ सका था क्योंकि वे कोर्ट के बीएचयू कोर्ट के सदस्य थे उनके उनकी अनुशंसा पर ही मुझे वहाँ से परमिशन मिला था सुरेंद्र प्रसाद तरुण हैड बीन अ यंग जर्नलिस्ट अ क्लोज एसोसिएट ऑफ भीकू जी ही यूज टू हैव रेगुलर कॉन्टैक्ट विद भीकू जी अड़तालीस उनचास में कश्यप जी आए यहाँ राजगीर में उनके रिलेटिव थे पोस्ट मास्टर एक तो अखबारों का छपता था तो कहीं के अखबार यह मैं कौन लिखता है लड़का तो तरुण लिखता कि नहाँ का नाम बुलाइए तो वही दामोदर बाबू के हमको बुलाया गया काश्यप जी मेरी मुलाकात हुई काश्यप जी ने अपनी भावना का इजहार मेरे सामने किया और कहा तुम मेरे साथ से आ जाओ तुम साहिल लड़के हो तुम चाहते हो कि नलंदा बढ़े मैं भी चाहता हूँ नलंदा बढ़े तो उन्हीं साथ मैं हो गया दो काश्यप जी वॉज अ मैन ऑफ बिग बिल्ड ही हैड बीन सफरिंग विद डायबिटीज एंड हाई ब्लड प्रेशर ही हैड फॉलन इल एंड ऑन इंसिस्टेंस ऑफ जैपनीज गुरु Fujui was shifted to Japanese temple in Rajgir. He continued his efforts for Nalanda Mahavihar's progress till his end from here only. Fujui Guru had a lot of love and affection for Kashyap ji. The origin of the term Kashyap goes back deep into history. A repetition, a symbol, an emblem of his greatness. There is a similar parallel in history going back to 73 AD China. An Indian Buddhist pilgrim, Kashyap Matang, had visited China as a missionary to propagate Buddhism. Bhikshu Ji wanted that the studies of Pali should continue and for that Navanalanda Mahavihar is making great efforts. As a result, when Government of India was celebrating 2550th Mahaparinirvana of Lord Buddha, at that occasion, for the first time, the first volume of Pali Hindi Dictionary was released by His Excellency, the then President, Dr. Abdul Kalamji. Subsequently, the second volume would be coming and uh, other volumes would also come. And in six volumes, the entire Pali Hindi Dictionary project would get completed. So that will be another step in the development for the Pali studies. After that, we are planning that once the vocabulary and the words would be standardized, we would go in for the translation of the Pali Tipitaka. A Japanese saint Fujui had said, according to Buddha, after Buddhism had died out, 
it would be reborn in Magadh and it would be revived by a bhikshu. The legend of Kashyapji makes the prophecy come true.